sniff her ear. What's the matter with you all? We were just playing. Who is she? We were defending the pack from a stranger. She smells weird. <sighs> you pups are too nosy. This is Layali, and she will be staying with us until her shoulder heals. You know, the wound you three probably reopened. Be nice to her, like you should be to all our guests. Now, Go bug Zane for a while, will you? Babysitting duty, I take it? Unfortunately. Since we returned early with Prey yesterday, Xenia thought we should take it easy. <sighs> to be honest, I'd rather be sent hunting again. Pups are a nuisance. No, I think pups are a blessing to any pack, but sitting around here can get rather tiresome, even more so than running through the savannah. Sometimes it's good to relax. Being on the run all the time, well, that is tiresome. <laughs> are you going to tell me your mysterious backstory next, stranger? No way. I'll spare you the tragic details. <laughs> it's okay. I won't press you. Our packs often take in wary travelers like yourself, small groups needing a place to rest their paws. Most of the time, they aren't wanderers, though. They're pack dogs searching for new lands. Sometimes they stay a long time, sometimes they don't. Not all of them share their stories with us, but that's okay. Today is more important than yesterday, right? Yes, absolutely. of stories, one of those would probably keep these nuisances quiet for a while, hmm? Are you gonna tell one, Zane? Chill. I'm joking. Uh, I'd better be the one to tell it, don't you think? How about the story of the first colors? That one? Ash dogs tell that story too? Doesn't every painted dog tell that story? Yes. It's part of all our history. Pack dogs and wanderers alike. Gather around now, pups. You're gonna hear something I don't think your mama has told you yet. Long ago, much longer than our ancestors can recall, animals had no color. The great continent of Africa was barren and ugly with no plants or water. The creatures that lived on it were simple, not at all what they're like today. One day, a god of the universe took pity on the beasts and decided to give them special powers in order to bring beauty and pride to the land of its inhabitants. This god is Alderaan. The supreme creator. He crafted his plan, mapping out the beauty that our home could offer if given the right attention. First, he had to build the world, but he could not do this alone, so he gifted the animals with special powers to tend the land and sea so nothing would ever stay the same. It would be forever changing, like the creatures who lived there. First, there was Lion, who was given the powers of the sun, 
He grew a glorious, fiery mane to rival the stars itself, and a boisterous roar that he would use to wake it every morning. Leopard was given the powers of the moon. She was given a luminescent coat and a long tail that would help her climb the tallest tree, leading the moon and stars up their path in the sky. Then there was Hyena, blessed with the powers of the clouds. The happy animal would create puffs of white softness when he laughed. The puffs would float up to the sky, bringing up hopes and happiness of animals with them. But if he was angry, his growls would create storm clouds that ravaged the sky. Cheetah was given the powers of the wind. She could run faster than any animal and stirred the air with her long legs. Her racing paws created mighty winds all over the savannah. Crocodile was given the powers of the rivers. The water swirled and roared along with him, adapting to his mood. When he was calm, the rivers ran smooth and slow, but if agitated, they could run rapid and wild. Then the hooved creatures, of course, which included zebra, impala, gazelle, and other beasts, were given the powers of the earth and connection. During the day, they would run as one, all different animals working together and acting as though they were the same. Together, they molded hills and valleys, and at night, they rested together, creating the peaceful prairies. Giraffe was separated from the hooved ones as Oleron gave her a long neck so she could pull up the plants with her teeth. The plants grew up to the sky, reaching for the sun. They grew tall and beautiful as she did, graceful and proud. She had the powers of the foliage. Now that Oleron and his children had mapped out the world, the only thing left to do was color it. Oleron had wonderful blueprints for the land that were amazingly ambitious but he prudently decided to delegate the job to someone else. It wouldn't do for the master of all to get his hands dirty after all. So he chose two dogs, brothers who wanted more for their home. Their hearts were true and shone through, easy to see as their black and white pelts. He gifted them two brushes to paint the world and give it color. Now, these two brothers whose true names are long lost to history are known to us as the light dog and the dark dog. They had the powers of light and shadows, and were opposites of each other. Of course, they were the ones responsible for color, qualities of light being reflected off of objects. The older brother, the light dog, had paints consisted of bright abstract colors no animal had ever seen. Beautiful shades of blues, reds, yellows, greens, purples, and many others. All the animals were drawn to him and his beautiful brushes and paints. The younger brother, the dark dog, had colors that were platonic. Though very much needed to balance the world of color, his paint lacked the vividness of the light dog's paint, where his blacks, browns, grays, and creams had their own natural beauty. They were often ignored by the animals who clamored to see the light dog's amorous and bright spiritual colors. But he was still proud of his neutral colors, and he knew the other animals would soon see their own plain beauty, staying within the boundaries his brushes gave him. The dogs used their special brushes to paint the continent. The sun was painted first, and that made Lion quite happy. The trees and land and rivers were painted. Everyone was happy all around because the continent had become more beautiful and bright. Eventually, however, everything seemed to go wrong. The dark dog watched in envy as most of the animals asked to be painted in his brother's bright and vivid colors, which clashed outlandishly with the neutral landscapes of the mountains and grasslands. The animals could not blend in and had trouble hunting and hiding. This was not what Oleron had hoped for his creations. And yet, with all the drawbacks, they still swarmed and praised the older brother. The dark dog thought them all fools. He grew cold and angry, abashed at how the animals simply ignored his paint's simplistic essence, but awed at his brother's flashy, obnoxious shades. Over time, the jealousy consumed the dark dog. Driven by rage, he challenged his brother in battle, the loser having to give up his colors forever. So the brothers fought the only way they knew how, by using their brushes. They competed with each other painting the world in many contrasting colors. It was beautiful, of course, but neither saw it that way. They only saw the world as their canvas, to make the other jealous. The dark dog dominated the nighttime, making the sky so dark that no animal could see. 
The light dog chased the clouds away during the day so every animal could see his bright sun. As the great battle went on, dark prevailed. His paints, the colors of the ground, the night sky and clouds were spread all over and were splashed on every animal that was around. Zebra had his white body stained with streaks of black that reminded him of lightning down his sides. Cheetah and Leopard were affected too, obtaining dark splotches on their previously golden painted coats. The animals finally matched their surroundings, and it was beneficial to them all. But no animal turned out looking like the dogs did. They were the most colorful of them all. They were astonished to find that no animal could tell the pair apart from each other. They were no longer opposites, now that they had the exact same colors on their fur. Neither were one or another, but a mix of each element, both made up of light and dark aspects. Seeing this, the two brothers realized how silly they were acting, how even though their colors were different, their jobs were the same, to make the world a beautiful place to live in. They joined together as one and gave up on their arguing, and continued their quest to paint the lands. They became the first painted dogs, and ever since then, all painted dogs were born with their fur, a mixture of both light and dark. A perfect blend of both simple and exotic beauty. Just how my Baba told it to me. But Zara, what happened to them? The light and dark dog, which pack were they part of? Back then, there were no packs. Every animal lived in harmony. But then why do some animals eat each other? Uh, um... This is just a legend, kids. None of this is actually true. Unless you believe it is. Really? I was told this could be actual history. Why else would we have our colors? Camouflage for our hunts? Don't be ridiculous. This is a nursery tale. I believe it. The Great Battle must have been awesome! Legend also says that the brushes are still out there, at the very top of the Painted Mountain. Brave explorers have tried to seek out these mysterious objects, but none have returned successfully. Oh, come on. There is no such thing as a Painted Mountain. How would you know? Your pack never leaves this valley, Killjoy. Oh, and I'm sure this raggedy wanderer before me has wandered far enough that she has actually seen it. No! But that doesn't mean it's not out there. Have you no faith? You boring old healer. Stuck in your cave for so long that all you know to exist are herbs and berries? See if I fix it shouldn't now, asshole. You said it yourself. You're shitty at it. As if I need your help. You're lucky these boring old ash dogs have ever taken in your sorry ass. We should have left you out there to rot. I might be better off. 